everyone, it's Sabrina Alexis here, and today we are gonna talk about signs that you are turning toxic. I've done a few videos on this channel and on my website, anumo.com, about signs that you're in a toxic relationship. But what if you're the toxic one? Hmm. This is not information anyone wants to receive about themselves, but it's really important to know. Sometimes you just have to take a good hard look in the mirror. The good news is though, being a toxic person isn't a final destination. I mean, we're all a little toxic from time to time. Sometimes it's just toxic behaviors. Sometimes we've become a totally toxic person, but it can be fixed. The first step is identifying if that's where you're at. And I am gonna cover it all in this video. So make sure you watch until the end. Real quick, if you like this video and find it helpful, make sure you tap that like button and please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post new content. Don't just rely on YouTube to send you back here. Also, if you wanna know what it takes to have a healthy, amazing, loving, happy relationship, then you should definitely check out our love formula system. We cover it all, including how to build up your self-esteem so that you are not that toxic person and that you can have a healthy relationship. Anyway, you can download it right now or when you're done with this video at getloveformula.com and I will I'll link it down below. Okay, let's get into it and talk about the signs that you are toxic. Number one, you can't be happy for other people. <sighs> this is a tricky one and it's it happens to the best of us. And look, with this list, if you check yes to like one or two, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a toxic person. That's just a little flag, a little something that, okay, maybe this is something that I need to work on, but it doesn't mean that you're toxic. I would say take this list as if you do most of these things most of the time, then you're a toxic person. A little bit here and there means, okay, these are some toxic behaviors that I could work on. So not being happy for other people, usually if you're unable to be happy for other people, it's because you are lacking something within yourself. You feel unfulfilled and unhappy in your life because people who are happy and fulfilled in their life can be happy for other people because why not? <laughs> it can be hard though sometimes, like if you really want to get engaged and married and you're single and you're seeing everyone around you getting engaged, if you're trying to get pregnant and everyone around you is getting pregnant, if you are struggling financially and other people are, and your friends are getting promotions and they're crushing it, that's really painful. I think the most important mindset shift here is to recognize that someone else gaining something isn't taking anything away from you. Your friend getting engaged, she's not taking away from you, like unless this is a guy that you really want wanted to marry, in which case that's a whole other drama to deal with. Instead of looking at it as, why me? It's not fair. Why does everyone else get the things that I want? Use it as fuel to inspire you, to show, okay, like she got this amazing guy, I'll find one too. My friend got an amazing promotion, you know, and if I work hard at my job, then maybe I will, you know, get to that point too where I'm making that kind of salary and can travel the way she can. Use it as inspiration instead of something that's just gonna demotivate you and make you feel bad about yourself. But it is important to recognize when you are rooting for other people to fail because that is a pretty toxic trait. Number two, you have a problem with everyone. Do you have a problem with everyone in your life? Do you think everyone is just too selfish, too narcissistic, too self-involved, too mean? Do you feel like everyone's out to get you? If you do, then they might not be the problem. It might be you. There was this like graphic I saw on Pinterest or something the other day. It was like, if everyone you meet is a jerk, you're the jerk. So if you have a problem with everyone, then you're the problem. And it's important to recognize that. Look, are there exceptional cases where people are really surrounded by a bunch of terrible jerks in their life? Yeah, but if you literally have a problem with everyone, if everyone is in the wrong and you're always in the right, girl, we gotta check that. When you do this, you're not accepting responsibility for your own life and how your actions might be affecting others and in turn causing them to react to you in certain ways. Look, we all have flaws. I'm sure the people around you have flaws and you also have flaws too. Number three, you love the drama. Maybe you stir the pot, maybe you like to gossip, maybe you swear to a friend you're not gonna tell something that she tells you and then you go and tell it because why not? It's fun, it's fun to spill the tea. The thing with drama is that drama is an escape. It's an escape when we watch other people's drama on TV, like the Kardashians and the Housewives. It's an escape. It's also an escape in our real lives, in our own little reality shows that we call it, which is, doesn't it kind of feel like we all are on our own reality shows like these days with Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat and everyone like documenting everything. We're all reality stars pretty much. And we all have our own little dramas, but some people are much more addicted to it than others. The thing with drama, and I talk about this in my content on why we date damage cases, and with damage cases, the issue is that they're an escape. It's you're getting lost in his drama and his damage and his issues, so you don't have to face your own. When you're stirring the pot and stirring drama, 
It's a distraction from whatever's making you so unhappy in your own life. Also, it's a way to take other people down by gossiping, by sharing secrets that you shouldn't be sharing, by talking bad about other people. They say misery loves company and maybe you're so unhappy you wanna see other people being unhappy too. It's also possible that you're a drama queen because you just like the attention, you can't get enough. Why do you like the attention? Because that makes you feel valuable in some way. Why? Because you don't already feel valuable in your own life. And that is what's contributing to these toxic behaviors in the first place. Number four, you think you know best. Okay, guys, guilty. I mean, I've done this a lot with my friends and that's why some of them would hide from me whenever they were having relationship problems because I know best. I'm like, I do this for a living. I'm a professional, listen to me. But sometimes it can come across as overbearing and being too controlling. And why do we do this? It's because maybe you feel out of control in your own life. So you're trying to assert control over other people because that makes you feel better. But it doesn't really do anything for your self-esteem, number one. And number two, it comes across as very toxic. Also, when you come from that place of I know better and you're just an idiot and you're screwing up and I can't believe you're going back to that guy for like the fifth time and I can't believe that you're doing this and that you're, I can't believe you haven't spoken to your boss about the way he's treating you. Like, I can't believe, I can't believe. You have no empathy. You have no compassion. And I feel like the feelings of frustration that you experience is really frustration with yourself because Maybe you too have gone back to bad boyfriends and have not stood up for yourself and have not done a good job enforcing your own boundaries. So it's really you just projecting your own pain onto other people and being so controlling because you feel out of control. Number five, you can't accept responsibility. Now I talk about this one in my content on how to know if you're in a toxic relationship and it's that your partner never accepts responsibility. He doesn't say sorry, nothing's ever his fault. It's always your fault. He yelled at you because you were being too annoying. Same is also true with identifying if you're a toxic person. Do you accept responsibility? Can you accept when you're in the wrong? I mean, look, we're all guilty of this sometimes. God, like as I'm speaking, I'm thinking of examples like, you know, of myself and not my finest hour, like being mad at my husband when I'm getting impatient with the kids and saying it's his fault because he should be more helpful and not accepting that, okay, like maybe I needed to take a few deep breaths and get a little bit centered so I don't get overwhelmed by the chaos around me. So we all slip into these things from time to time, but the first step is recognizing when you're doing it. Do you recognize that you don't often take responsibility for your actions are instead are just blaming everyone around you and everything. Maybe you always need a scapegoat. Maybe you say, oh, my relationships never work out because all men are jerks and they're just intimidated by me. Or maybe things don't work out because your parents screwed you up so badly. Or maybe it's because of the economy or the president or whatever's happening around you. There's always a scapegoat. There's always somebody to blame for your problems. Number six, you aren't nice. Look, there is that famous expression, hurt people hurt people. If you are hurt, then you will hurt others because you are in a negative, bitter, mean place. Are you a nice person or are you nasty and spiteful and resentful and just mean? Do you easily lash out at everyone around you? Do you feel like bitterness in your heart towards other people? Ask yourself that question. It's not even just the people closest to you. Are you just mean and mean to the waiter, mean to the bank teller, just mean to people that you interact with? This is a sign that you are deeply unhappy within your life, within yourself. And being so mean is only gonna make you feel worse about yourself. So I would say one exercise here, and we will talk about some more tools to eliminate the toxicity at the end of the video. But one thing to do is just start being nice, even if you don't want to be, you know? Like the other day I had to get into a fight with the insurance company for not covering something that they're supposed to cover. And I wanted to be mean. I wanted to be a Karen. I really did. I not because of them. Well, yeah, the situation is very frustrating, but because because I was angry. I just wanted to take it out on someone. It's not like the person on the phone I was talking to. But I realized, no, I'm not. I'm not going to unleash my frustration with things happening in my life on this person. I'm going to be nice. You attract more bees with honey, right? So that's the approach I took and hopefully it worked. We'll see if it gets resolved. But it does just make you feel better about yourself when you can rise above and just be nice. Number seven, you're an emotional vampire. I don't know if you guys watched the show Euphoria. I'm probably going to cover it more on my TikTok channel. But just in the most recent episode, Rue said that to Jules. Like, you're an emotional vampire. Just suck the life out of everyone around you. That's what an emotional vampire does. They have an excessive need for validation and essentially they're vampires. They suck the life out of everyone around them. They need constant attention, praise, validation. They need someone to always be there for them. Otherwise they'll lash out. I mean, emotional vampires, I'm sure you've known a few in your life. Maybe you've been one uh, at certain points in your life, but 
they don't feel good to be around. You feel drained, you feel exhausted. You just feel like, get me away from this person. Emotional vi vampires are in a place of just taking, taking, taking. And they think that it's owed to them because they're suffering. And people who are in pain think that the world owes them something. But when you act like this, you become a pretty toxic person. Number eight, you're self-involved. It's all about you and it's all about your drama. The fact is healthy relationships are reciprocal. So if it is all about you and your needs, be it in romantic relationships or in friendships, that's not a healthy dynamic. That's a toxic dynamic. You have to get out of your own head and be other oriented. Otherwise you're just gonna be alone. No friends, no boyfriend, no nothing. Number nine, you're passive aggressive. Oh, what's worse than passive aggression? But we all do it, you know? <laughs> like, even as I say it, I think of examples where I've done it, but some people do it much more than others. When you are passive aggressive, it's just a sign that you don't feel comfortable expressing your needs. So you feel like you have to do it in a roundabout way. Maybe you have residual trauma from childhood and that makes you avoid conflict. So rather than saying something outright, you're just passive aggressive about it. And then because you're being passive aggressive, people don't always pick up on what it is you want. And then you get resentful that nobody ever meets your needs and no one understands you and the world is out to get you and everything is so wrong and terrible. So you have to recognize when you're doing it. And believe me, I'm someone that really hates conflict, so I fully understand that need to run away from it, but it really does not make for healthy relationships and it's just gonna end up filling you with resentment in the end. And it's just gonna make other people just annoyed by you because no one likes like a passive aggressive person. Like just say what you want. And number 10, you think you're toxic. Look, if you suspect that you're toxic, then it's probably because you've been a little toxic. Doesn't mean that you're a full-blown toxic person, but it means you probably have been engaging in some toxic behaviors and we could probably stand to get those under control. Okay, so how do we get them under control? A lot of the time, people who are toxic, it's the result of being very hurt in the past. Maybe in childhood, always comes back to childhood, or in a previous relationship. So you have to recognize that, that the way you are is a product of deep hurt and pain. Now, focus on tackling that hurt and pain. Where does it come from? What happened? And how can I deal with it? Maybe you could deal with it on your own. Maybe you could read a good book. Maybe you'll work with a therapist or a life coach. There's so many amazing skilled professionals out there. Next, try to think about a time when things were good, when you were happy, when you were a better version of yourself. Try and tap into that energy and focus on becoming that person in any way you can. Obviously, we can never go back and fully become our previous selves, but what was going on in your life? Why is it that you felt so much better then and you were a better partner, a better friend, a better everything at that point? Next, work on the things you can control. You can't control how other people act. You can't control whether other people experience great fortune or misfortune. That's not under your control. All you can control is yourself and the way that you act and the way that you behave and the energy that you put out into the world. Start there. Start focusing on what's under your control. And finally, try to be grateful because if you are a toxic person or engaging in toxic behaviors, it's because you're angry, you're sad, maybe you've taken on a negative perspective of life, of your life, of the things that have happened to you. But I guarantee there are things in your life that are good that you can be grateful for. Try to focus on those. Do a little gratitude journal if you want, or just every day try to pick a few things to be grateful for. I hope this was helpful. I hope it wasn't too depressing. I hope it gave you some tools and some motivation to change and work on yourself so you get out of that toxic headspace. Let me know other tips that you have. Leave them below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the Anu Mode newsletter. If you haven't already, anumode.com slash subscribe. Check out our love formula system. It covers everything you need to know in order to be amazing at relationships. And you can get that at getloveformula.com. We'll link it down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.